and drop it at the ballot box, but just in case, we'll repeat it. Uh, we're very happy to have uh, Mario Garcia with us. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna introduce him because you know him already at, at Kaleidos, and uh, he's gonna do a, a small presentation and uh, live coding also uh, regarding the. Yeah? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Uh, please, a uh, big uh, round of applause for him. He's very proud. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I've been having some issues with the emulator, so um, I'm not still sure if I'm going to be able to run anything, but uh, still, it's going to be a live coding, which uh, everybody knows that um, Murphy's Law is always present. So hopefully, uh, I will be able at least to show you code. Okay, first of all, for those who don't know me, I'm Mario Garcia, I'm a software engineer in Kaleidos. Uh, we mostly work with technologies like uh, Ruby, uh, Rails, and Python as well. Um, but uh, we kind of like any, any kind of technology. Okay, well, those are my social links in case you want to contact me. So. What is this talk about? Well, it's uh, basically like coding. The idea uh, was uh, trying to build uh, an Android application with Ruby in an hour. Well, I think at this moment that was a little bit pretentious. Um, but at least uh, if you are not ending with uh, knowing where to get coffee in Barcelona, at least you will have some ideas on how to uh, develop Android applications with Ruby, OK? so. Basically, what we are going to be seeing through the code is uh, a kind, uh, well, a list of technologies. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's because, uh, well, yeah, kind of, uh, no, that's worse. Better? Okay. So basically, we are going to be uh, seeing a, a list of technologies or features of the language that will improve your experience uh, developing uh, Android applications, OK? So basically, we will be creating a new project using LazyBones with a kind of template engine, the same way that modern um, archetypes are, are built. Uh, Gradle for building your apps. This is a very well-known uh, building tool. Uh, and then some features of the language uh, that are very helpful when you are developing applications, such as traits, um, module extensions, uh, DSLs, and AST transformations. Uh, we'll, we'll be seeing samples of everything uh, during, the, during the presentation. So uh, I don't know if I had something after that. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing uh, is, of course, creating a new uh, project. I have here, uh, well, uh, let me, yeah. Basically, what I have here is a multi-module Gradle uh, app. And here I have like a, a module with all my uh, utils. And now I'm going to be creating a, an application for using those utils. So uh, I'm going to be using LazyBones, which uh, is, is a command line project. Basically, um, use uh, LazyBones. Basically, uh, what LazyBones is, is like a, um, a repository of templates. So basically, if you want to build something, you just list the, the repositories that are available, uh, LazyBones list. And it will show you what types of projects you can be building with uh, lazy ones. Um, at the moment, I have these two that I have created for creating. Uh, and oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's kind of. I don't know how to put this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Well, never mind. I, I'm going to be using this because it's the, the project. So basically, um, you will uh, install, let me, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was uh, I was talking about. You just, 
use Laceable list and it will just show you a list of available templates. One of those will be this one, which is uh, a template for creating a new uh, Android with Groovy project. So basically, once you start executing this Lazy Bones um, archetype, it will ask you for several things that are important for Android developers. Okay, so for example, uh, the, the base uh, package, the SDK that you want to be using, the build tools, and so on, okay? Those are things that you can configure later on, but for getting a started, this is something nice to, to be asked for. Okay, so basically that's what I was going to be doing. Hopefully, uh, okay, so basically what I'm writing, you have to believe me here. Um, let's even create, grew it, new project. And Terrible. Oh, yeah, CBC, yay, BCN, conf, app. Okay. Oh, well, this thing happens. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so basically, what I'm going to be doing is uh, now that I have the whole application ready. I'm going to import it into Android Studio, okay? So basically, uh, uh, I'm going to be importing a Gradle app into the Android Studio. So uh, because it's tightly integrated, um, it's uh, normally it, it detects what is a, a Gradle app. So basically, I will be having this app and this module, which is the, 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 the library, okay? So now it's important, it takes uh, a little bit. But in the meantime, uh, I will back to uh, here, the Android Groovy templates, which is a project that I've been uh, creating for, for building new templates for, for building uh, Android applications with Groovy. Um, you have at the moment for creating a new project, for creating a new library, okay? Um, as I said, this is uh, created but using this project, Lazy Bones. Lazy Bones has uh, information about how creating templates in the wiki page in GitHub. Okay, so if you want to take a look, uh, you have it there. Okay, so it's still there. It's one of the things that really pissed me off of uh, Android development. It takes a while for everything, but hopefully it will show show up the the. Let me see, creating lazy bones, yeah. Okay. It didn't happen to me tonight, last night. It only happens when I'm doing the demo. Okay, there you go. Uh, something to show you in the meantime. No, oh my God, come on. I don't know why this morning has chosen me for um, any questions so far? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, as I told you, if oh my god, I'm going to see if I can change the resolution, but I think this is a little bit hopeless. Uh, what I can do maybe is just to change. It's even worse. Uh, okay, at least it's better. Okay, so now you have these two uh, modules. Uh, the, the upper one is for is the application itself, and the lower one is a library. Okay, so there is a kind of uh, features of the language samples that I'm going to be showing you uh, during this demo. Okay, so there are two activities. If you are um, a little bit familiar with Android development, basically every screen that you are seeing in an application is an activity. Okay, so. 
the first thing that we see here is um, a lot of code, okay? Much more than I, I wanted. So this is, uh, I did it in, on purpose because I wanted to start viewing that normally that you see in Java and then move to uh, less code with, with Ruby, okay? So uh, once we have created the lazy bones uh, structure, uh, I have to configure something here, project Gradle scripts. So normally what the way I'm working with Android is like having a, having a library where all the dependencies are, are written and the application only has um, the dependency of the library module itself. So I'm only handling the dependencies in one place and only one place. Um, all the thing I have to do, I will explain to you later on, is that I need to hack the packaging options because of some, um, some incompatibilities with, uh, with Ruby module extensions, uh, services, then I don't know with that hard. So services, org, code house, Groovy, runtime, extension module. Okay. So let's start reviewing the code. So the, f the first thing is um, I'm going to be showing you is, is traits. Okay. So, yeah. So basically, uh, if you are familiar with um, with Android development, when you are developing uh, the different kinds of uh, activities, you may be facing that you want to reuse some of the code. And the first thing that uh, um, springs to mind is to make those activities extend uh, as particular um, a particular class. So basically, uh, you may be wanting to uh, create like a base activity and then all the, the rest of the activities are inheriting from that activities. Well, from uh, Groovy 2.4, we have traits. So basically, uh, you can be, uh, instead of extending, you can be using implements. And instead of using interfaces, you can be extending uh, toastable, toastable. So basically, I'm going to show you that here I have a, a trait which basically has a, like a functionality which is just showing a, a message uh, to the to the to the user, and I want to be reducing that everywhere. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be making the project. Here. Okay, so instead of extending anything, if I just uh, add dependency, there you go. Now I have the, the functionality. I, I don't have to extend anything. Implementing this trade or maybe another one, star activity, I can be um, like creating like modules of functions um, coupled to a specific trade, okay? So this is one of the ways of uh, um, reusing code using, using Groovy, okay? So Basically, uh, uh, there is a, I can be here, I can be creating like else if, if ID, R, ID, uh, message, then uh, notify, notify message, and then use the not implemented jet. Create. Okay, uh, I believe. Okay. Sources, values, strings. Okay, I have here message, and then. Which is the menu? I'm going to be creating another one. Active 
message and string is ah, not the end point. Okay. So basically, it still looks like uh, pretty much like a Java Android application. I'm going to keep on. Um, so here we have uh, the traits, and then the next one uh, is uh, extensions. So I'm going to. Okay, so extensions. Um, having the the traits is, is perfectly fine, but the thing is that uh, some of the things that I want to be using is uh, specific for activity. So if I know for for sure that I will be using certain types of functions for certain types of object hierarchies, I could be creating an extension. An extension is basically uh, like saying for a specific type of object, I will be having uh, more functions that the object has itself. So basically for an activity, let me show you the, uh, the this library extensions. I have here uh, like uh, uh, this one, so message, okay? So uh, you saw that when I was using the trade, uh, there was a new method called notify uh, message. Um, and if I'm using the, the extensions, I don't have to implement, oh yeah, thank you. So, so instead, I'm referring to this method. Okay, so basically, if if I don't want to implement anything, but I want uh, all activities to have this show message, I will be creating an uh, extension. An extension is a, a set, um, a pair of uh, class with a descriptor. So in this particular case, I have this class, which has this method, which is by uh, telling that for any activity, I will have this show message method, which only has one single parameter, which is the, the message code, the message key, okay? So if I go back to my main activity and I remove this and I try to, it's called show message, So message. There you go, I have the code right there. Sorry, this is a string. Let me cradle build. Okay. So I have the um, I have the the method available without uh, me doing anything. It's just a matter that uh, once you have this uh, object with those methods and this description right here uh, layout. There you go. This descriptor describes which uh, classes has new extensions. So basically, there's a module extension called widgets in their 1.0, and in those classes, the uh, the runtime environment uh, should be looking for new extensions. Okay, so I go back here. Did you pray? Try it again. I don't know. Well, let's move on. Okay, so extensions. Okay, next one. Um, well, this is perfectly fine, but for example, uh, if you see this code right here, the show about method, uh, for a Java application, it's a kind of nice uh, uh, fluent API, but I'm not very happy with that. I, I, I think we can come up with something uh, simpler and uh, with DSLs, it doesn't matter if it's Groovy or it's Scala, I mean, DSLs are great for, for doing things simpler, okay? So for example, I have created um, a DSL on top of an extension that basically 
removes this code, like saying, so dialog with layout. Um, basically, I'm using the same layout that is used here. And then I have like a closure, uh, which basically um, resolves all the properties that normally you will find in an our dialog builder. So for example, if I want to save the icon and the title, instead of calling the methods, I can type title. And in this particular case, I'm going to be using the, the setter that needs a string. I'm going to be using any, any string message. Not implemented yet, OK. And the other one was the icon. So, okay. so I'm going to be using the ID drawable, drawable, drawable. I see launcher. Okay. So instead of having this lines of code, I I think it's uh, not only simpler but it's more uh, legible. Okay. So it saves you a kind of uh, a bunch of lines of code. Uh, moreover. Um, it's a type check, so I can say I can't, I mean, the code knows that there's no property, there's no symbol inside the builder class with that name. So you don't have to give up your uh, static typing with Groovy, which is something that normally people tend to, to think. Um, if you notice here, I'm using compile static because normally in Android development it's very important the performance. Uh, we tend to use the compile static. We basically com uh, static compiled your your code, and then you can uh, gain in performance a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. So extensions, ESL, ASDs. Okay. So ASDs. Uh, ESTs is the most powerful thing that you can be uh, working on on Groovy. Uh, normally, uh, Java uh, Java developers on Android use APT, which is basically um, annotations processor, uh, which basically generates code. But the thing is that you have to have your generators um, and your code uh, in Groovy because it's built on top of the compiler. You don't have to have different uh, building tools. You write your transformation and the compiler do the, 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 uh, the rest. So there are, um, or there were already some, some ASDs here. So basically, this annotation is uh, a transformation. It triggers a transformation, right? So basically, what it does is that when this method is called, it will be called in the UI thread, because it's very important in Android not to, mi mi to mix uh, background threads with UI threads because you can freeze the the, the emulator or the uh, or the device, and um, sometimes it just don't happen because the the compiler that done just the text that you are using the wrong um, wrong thread and it just uh, blows up and kicks you out. Okay, so are great because it generates a lot of code and sometimes it makes sense. For example. It doesn't make sense to have just a method for having a call for the supper uh, method and then the content view. We can just remove this with an, an another transformation that says content view and then the layout. Okay, so basically it's the main layout. So there you go. You have saved um, you have saved like a reasonable number of lines. Moreover, it's that it's kind of the feeling that it's kind of pissing that you have to write over uh, boilerplate code. Uh, so for example, this one, I don't like it. I, I don't like to be having like a, a number of ifs, else, and so on. So I want to change that. But before that, I had to get rid of the options menu, which was the same case that the content view. So I'm going to be using another transformation that basically says, uh, Menu is on create menu. Menu. I have to cheat a little bit. I have the transformation right here. Is options menu. Okay. Options menu. And basically, you are doing the same thing. You are using the layout 
and there you go. So what is uh, left? The options of the menu. So basically, if one of the options were this show about, I don't have to write that. I can just say on options, it's in selected. ID, it was action about. There you go. And uh, I can just uh, get this in another method. This was uh, show not implemented yet. And then on options, on options, it is selected. Then using the same thing, RID, and this case was message that was sent. Yeah. And remove that code. So there's a missing there. So uh, using traits, extensions, and DSLs, you can come up with code uh, such as this one. Uh, instead of having to scroll your, down the, your, your code, you can uh, be very legible, and you know uh, for sure what it's doing. So basically, this activity is using this content view. Uh, it is using this specific layout for the menu. And then there is two uh, actions for for that menu. One is for showing a message, and the other one is just for uh, showing up a, a dialogue. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be creating another uh, another activity just to show you some other um, some other uh, AST transformations. Uh, any questions so far? Um, I'm sorry, guys, because uh, today was m wasn't my day, and I don't know what happened with the environment. Um, I will try to to uh, make it work later. Um, so, no questions so far. Yeah. Hi. Um, is there a way to tell the GI? That the, the, those methods are not not being called because they are on gray. Yeah, um, it's like uh, telling you. Yeah, it's I not mean, used. It's not being used. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. And if you are using like a, a tool like a coverture and things like that, well, if you are using if you are using a kind of a coverture, a plugin, coverage plugin, and you are using tests, uh, you will be seeing that it's covered because it's run, it's called. But it's true that the ID is not telling you anything. It could be done. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure at the moment. I'm just trying to think uh, how to program the AST in order to to say that actually a method is being called. But I'm not sure about that. Okay. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm not sure about these uh, annotations. But with IntelliJ, you can say Alt Enter, mark them as. I mean, do not remind me about them. So if you go to on UI thread, for example. Save the rate, convert to cross your property. No, 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 go to the annotation. Yeah. Go to click, oh. click on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then alt enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, create, yeah. It should be showing like, create like a new entry for the, uh, the IDE. Well, anyway, uh, it's a message. I can just message. I'm going to get rid of this and this and there should be a string called message and then it's done. So okay, so no problem. It's just that because I, I'm not going to be able to run it, uh, it I didn't bother. Okay, so what else? What else? Um, there's still uh, like 10 minutes or so. I'm going to be creating a new activity just to show you a couple of more things uh, that has to do with uh, sub list activity, activity, Ruby. Okay, so JVC uh, conf, class sub list activity, extends list activity. Okay. So, now, uh, let's say I want to uh, be executing, uh, I'm going to be creating Leon create, 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 
create Okay, so sometimes you just want to, to grasp a, a specific um, uh, view or component inside your, your view. So for example, if I want to be clicking on a button and triggering some action, I could be using an annotation uh, called uh, inject view. And I only have to, so, sorry, first of all, create the set content view and then layout list. So basically, if I have a button in, in that uh, view, button, button, okay, that's for class, 100 widgets, correct? And then inject view, and then I know that the button is called action button. So basically, uh, the only thing I have to do is to call Swiss knife inject this. Basically, what I'm doing here is that instead of having to do uh, find by ID on Android, I can inject the, 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 the specific widget here. This is not something new. I mean, uh, Java developers have been doing this for a while uh, because uh, the library I'm using here is based on something that has been, using, that has been created in Java for quite a long time. Okay? But the thing is that we are creating uh, well, the useful, uh, the useful uh, transformation that we saw in those, in those projects are new ones, okay? So, as I said, I'm, um, I'm injecting that view if I want to uh, trigger some action, action from bottom. Uh, I can be rather, uh, whether using like another annotation on click, specifying which, uh, button I'm using, or I can be using uh, a DSL, like saying, when clicking that specific button, do, do this or do that, okay? So um, this is one, and the other I, want to, I wanted to show you is uh, sometimes when you are using um, um, strings or some configuration that you can be using here, such as Let's say I have a service and um, I, I, I put the, the, the host here, uh, let's say the 10.2288, okay? I want to be using that for whatever reason, normally for, for uh, acting on a service, a REST API. Uh, I can be injecting that specific uh, resource here. I can be saying, okay, inject the host uh, uh, string here, like using a string rest of the Swiss knife library, okay? So I can be, I can be calling here, uh, I haven't created the, the service, but um, I'm going to be creating here the sub service Groovy, which so I'm going to be saying, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to be an interface, interface sub service okay so let's say that I want to uh, retrieve a list of strings with the names find all names of a given city find all coffee shop coffee shop names from a given city uh, here I'm using a, a very well-known uh, library, which is called Retrofit, which is basically uh, an HTTP client of 400 from Foursquare. Four it's very highly recommendable to use that, that library. It's very, very neat, very clean, and it's very, uh, very useful and very easy to use. So basically, if I want to be attacking at a specific endpoint, let's say uh, I'm going to pass the name of the city here, and I'm saying that uh, that uh, class. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Better than. So basically, um, I'm um, I'm creating an interface which I'm, uh, where I'm describing uh, the action I'm going to be uh, doing against an, a REST API. So basically, I'm attacking to the sub city endpoint, 
to get all the coffee shop names and I'm going to be passing the city name as the uh, part of the path okay so uh, to be using that service I'm going to be using like an extension okay uh, I already created which is get service okay so but basically I have created with uh, passing the ID of the uh, string of that uh, holds a host or the host itself so basically if I'm here and I'm saying uh, okay let's uh, get the service I'm passing the host which is available there and I want you to return like a sub service okay and then I can be passing the name of the city Barcelona Barcelona oh uh, yeah oh, it's terrible sorry guys okay yeah so basically again um, I have used the, the annotation here to inject the the property and then I can use it I, I don't have to deal with the get a string from the activity and so on so basically I'm here uh, names and then I can be uh, showing the um, this adapter uh, and all the names okay so very quick before before questions okay so uh, one thing that is really uh, annoying about uh, dealing with the list activities is the list adapters, okay? So normally a list adapter, you create a, like a, a, a class and then you uh, describe how to match the properties of an object with the, uh, with the views, okay? So basically, I have a DSL for that, set list adapter, very quick, uh, custom adapter. So it's a method that is injected by that particular um, that particular extension and I'm going to be using list item so basically here I'm going to say for the property name I'm going to be matching uh, to the uh, list item uh, title title okay um, for example for the name brand I'm going to be using the view RID uh, list item info um, last but not least name brand and the address is going to be uh, a screen in the RID uh, list item uh, description okay so this is one of the things I have been doing uh, uh, quite a while and it's it's really nice to in just a few lines to do the same that instead of implementing a whole class uh, doing defined by IDs and so on okay so um, I think um, sorry about not showing it running you can just uh, stop me whatever you want during the conference and say hey show me show me this running and I will show you I assure you that this was running uh, okay so I think that is for the that is for the code uh, just reminding you the Swiss knife uh, the Swiss Knife project, which has everything, most of the things that I have been showing you, it has a very nice uh, ASCII doctor page uh, where you have all the documentation. Uh, if the network allows me to show you, uh, yeah. So basically, you have there all the annotations, the DSL methods available through the uh, module extensions, and and that's pretty pretty much. Uh, there are some things missing, but there's no time whatsoever. Yeah, uh, basically what is missing from this uh, talk is reactive programming and functional programming. Um, talking about reactive programming, uh, there is a workshop on uh, uh, Java RX, which I highly recommend. Uh, you can use R, uh, Java RX. Well, the guys are up there. Uh, and uh, for Groovy, is there, is a there is a specific module for using Groovy with uh, that library. And functional programming. Um, I've been using kind of uh, some abstractions, uh, like the try abstractions in the code. And it's very nice because you don't have to deal with the try catch that even more in Android development is, is, is more ugly, is uglier, okay? So uh, pretty much that's it. Uh, so if anybody has any question, 
uh, it's a pity because uh, I couldn't show much. But uh, any questions about Ruby performance, size? No. Uh, okay. Well, well, that's it. That's it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. As promised before, we have our stickies, so please uh, leave your feedback when, when leaving the room, and thank you. <laughs>